right, I'll go ahead and get started here. Um, again, for anyone that may have just joined us, I'm Alex Janicki, Director of Marketing here at TriStar, joined by Ryan Trump, uh, PTTC's Technical Pre-Sales Specialist. Um, we're going to be giving a, or he's going to be giving a presentation on uh, Voria Studio, which is a powerful augmentation uh, tool for the enterprise built by PTC. Um, so with that, uh, Ryan, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to you, and uh, we will be taking questions uh, at the end of the presentation. All right, sounds good. Um, thank you for <clears throat> that introduction. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. You should just be seeing a blank PTC background. Uh, can you see that, Alex? Yes. All right, perfect. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to start off by going through an augmented reality experience that was built on the Vuforia Studio platform to kind of give you an idea of the art of the possible. So we'll go ahead and jump into view here. And I already have loaded up a quick example of what an augmented reality experience looks like on Vuforia Studio. So um, this is what's known as a spatial target. So the idea here is that we can place this on any horizontal surface, uh, no matter where we are at. So you have full control, being able to spin it around, resize it however that you want to view it. And all around the outside of it, you can see that we do have some live streaming IoT data coming in here as well. So that is possible to display some sensor information. Now this is coming from our ThingWorks platform, um, but there are other means um, for doing live data as well. And there's a little pinger there, um, kind of indicating me to tap on that specific area. And when I do, it's gonna bring up a couple of different service instructions here that we've created for this experience. So if we do something like the install plow, we're going to be getting visual as well as text cues on what exactly we need to do for each step. So it's saying make sure any bucket cables are disconnected and locate the attachment levers. And you can see the arrows flashing to those. Then it'll ask us to pull our levers, levers to release the bucket and then we'll back the bobcat away. And then we have the ability to now dock the bobcat with the new plow attachment and we can push the levers to lock the plow into place. And this can be used for a lot of different things, whether that's training a new technician or even trying to have some customer self-service. So instead of sending like an instruction manual, trying to do it with pictures, uh, you can send something like this augmented reality experience along with it and they can pull it up on their device and then see it happen right in front of them. So they have a more of a, a better idea of how to actually perform this action themselves. And we'll go through another one of these as well. So this one's gonna be around servicing the tire. So once again, those text and visual instructions are gonna carry through. So as we go ahead and tap through, uh, we can see the different steps. And we also have the ability to bring in external tools. So you see, we actually have a socket wrench coming in there. Uh, so we do have that ability. If you want to bring in like a specialized tool for one of your operations, anything like that is entirely possible. So once again, you know, this is centered around um, you know, training as well as customer self-service, you know, getting everyone experience, seeing it virtually, and then actually sending them to do it on the physical product itself. We can build in other capabilities as well. So down at the bottom, we have another one of our V4 products, which is just chalk. So we do have the ability to exit right from an augmented reality experience into our V4 chalk product as well. So the next thing I'll do is go ahead and jump into some slides here quickly. Uh, basically just to give you some background on Studio and a couple of the other products because I know there's multiple different Vuforia products and we want to eliminate any confusion in this as well. So uh, here's kind of the agenda that we're gonna go through here with these actual slides. So we see some you know, different value points here in the market for augmented reality, specifically around service, marketing, sell, as well as operations and manufacturing. So the big challenges that we see around service or operations and manufacturing use cases, uh, mainly being slow assembly and maintenances, high cost mistakes, rework and downtime, as well as the availability of cost and training. Um, so generally, a lot of these are a little bit slower than they actually should be. Uh, you know, actually being able to put things together if you have a new technician trying to learn how to do all of this through a paper manual or trying to learn through someone else. 
uh, it tends to be a pretty slow and arduous process. Uh, whereas you, if you would put AR into there, uh, you could really speed up that training throughout the actual uh, process. Next up are gonna be the challenges around the use cases around the servicing aspects. So with margins declining um, from product sales, manufacturers are under increased pressure to deliver revenue and profit streams from service and provide competitive differentiation. Uh, but with these contracts mandating aggressive equipment readiness SLAs, there is intense pressure to avoid equipment downtime and maintain that equipment performance, as well as reduce service costs by avoiding expensive on-site service visits. There's also a need to capture technical service expertise and scale this knowledge across an ever-shrinking um, technical workforce. Um, so, you know, it's kind of surrounding a lot of these different um, challenges that we see. So the workforce productivity, the high equipment downtime, as well as poor service quality and high cost of service training. Um, generally, you know, a lot of those are going to be leading to multiple different service visits, lots of truck rolls, and that's going to lead into a lot of cost. So this slide here is going to kind of differentiate the different products here that we have. So we have Euphoria Studio, Euphoria Chalk, as well as Euphoria Engine. Um, so for content creators, that is going to be Euphoria Studio. So this is gonna be scalable AR authoring and publishing solution for industrial enterprises. It also enables solution builders to use an authoring tool to quickly create these augmented reality experiences. And chalk in the center, this is designed around remote assistance. So it's very easy to use uh, mobile AR collaboration tool for real-time remote guidance. And finally, Engine is aimed at developers. So this is a flexible AR toolkit uh, when building custom apps from the ground up. So go a little bit more in depth about Studio here. So this is a rapid AR authoring environment that enables industrial stakeholders to quickly create and share scalable augmented reality experiences. Uh, so the easy reuse of is ex existing 3D geometries and animated sequence with Euphoria Studio re reduces that cost and complexity of content creation for these compelling AR experiences. And furthermore, the acceleration of real-time contextualized IoT data from the ThingWork platform uh, fuels AR experiences for better and faster data-driven decisions. And these experiences that are authored in Studio are accessed via Vuforia View. Uh, so this is a single enter enterprise-wide viewer application built with Vuforia Engine that will deliver those rich 3D experiences for smartphones, tablets, and wearable devices. Uh, View is free to download and is available for Windows, iOS, and Android devices. So if you want to, after the call, um, download this on your devices. There's some cooked in experiences already there that you can um, play around with and get a little bit more of a feel for the capabilities that Studio has. So this is cross-platform technology um, that activates the breath and of handheld and head-worn devices. So, you know, we can support Fusix devices, HoloLens devices, and of course the mobile devices as well. So the phones and tablets. So this is a kind of a breakdown on how this actually works here. So we start with Euphoria Studio, we publish that content, and then we either scan a thing mark, uh, we do model tracking, or we do spatial tracking on the Euphoria View app to load in the experience that we just created. Some of the capabilities here, uh, it's gonna allow for fast AR authoring. So it's gonna accelerate that experience design and publishing with a drag and drop interface. It's also optimized for 3D CAD, so we can, re we can reuse those existing CAD models and animated sequences. We can easily incorporate real-time sensor and business system data. There's also support for CSS editing and styling, so create custom styles and IoT state-based formatting for gauges, labels, buttons, um, pretty much all of the elements inside of the platform. And there's also um, a, a very flexible deployment, so uh, it's secure and certified cloud hosting and even on-premise. So we do have the capability for offline experiences as well, so you can download these for offline viewing if you're in a uh, you know, no internet situation. <clears throat> so there's universal links you can give uh, to give the most integrated mobile experiences, so that's with easily sharing. Uh, you can simply share a link out and everyone will have access to it. Um, advanced tracking, so these user experiences will be enhanced with model as well as spatial targeting. 
And these experiences can be viewed across the enterprise on mobile devices, as well as digital eyewear. And like I mentioned, um, View is free to download. Uh, so whether that's the Google, Apple, or Windows App Store, you can download it and um, start playing with it. Next thing we'll jump into here is going to be a live demonstration of Studio itself. Oops. So what we'll do is we'll um, kind of go through this and we're gonna create basically an experience from scratch. So basically we can select on our template here. Uh, however, we wanna create it if we wanna do a uh, mobile device, we wanna do a 2D eyewear, we wanna do a 3D eyewear, that'll be all selected from here. Um, so our themes, <clears throat> this is either light or dark, however, we want to view things inside of Studio. Uh, from there, we can also decide if we want to do thing mark association. So if we want to use a thing mark, we'll declare that here and then also assign the thing mark number. For this, we're actually just going to stick with spatial. We'll switch over to info here. We'll validate our experience service. So that is where the Studio has been deployed, the cloud instance. Uh, you can always validate to make sure everything's up and running and working correctly. And then we can also come down here and set our access if we want requires authentication or leave it public. So what we'll do now is before we actually start building an experience, we're gonna actually create an animation on our CAD file here um, so that we have that already ready to go when we jump inside of the platform. So. Let's go ahead and start working on this. And this is through Creo Illustrate. Now this is our technical documentation tool. Um, it has a lot more capabilities than what we're gonna be going through today, um, but we're using this for its sequencing capabilities to create these service instructions. So as you see, I'm just selecting on the Bobcat here to back it away from the actual bucket itself. And then we will fade that bucket away since that will no longer be needed for a step. And I'll go ahead and select on our new part, fade that in and then we can get that linked up with our Bobcat here. So once again, we'll just select on all the assemblies that are pertaining to the Bobcat itself. We'll drag that forward. Now we'll go ahead and put our bars back down here to lock in the attachment. Pretty simple, uh, illustrates you know fairly straightforward. Everything's pretty much just dragging parts around. However, we want to actually um, create our animation. Uh, now, of course, we did something very simple, but this could ideally get as complex as we want it to. So we'll go ahead and start off by dropping a spatial target down here, since that's what we're building our experience on. We'll also grab a model container widget here. Uh, we'll scale this down a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and <clears throat> grab our CAD file which is gonna be a .pvz file, which is what Creo Illustrate natively publishes as. <clears throat> and then if we wanted to, we could also run our CAD optimizer, which will give us high, medium, and low resolution versions of the geometry. Now, linking the animation is very, very easy. If we just go to sequence here, we can go down and select on figure one. Uh, that will link up the the animation with this and the only thing we would need to do is add in a way to play it. So go ahead and line everything up here, make sure it looks the way we want it to. So that looks pretty good there. And then what we'll do next here is we're gonna go ahead and add an application parameter in. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to dynamically display some work instructions that we have coded in the back end in JavaScript. And we'll also go ahead and apply a CSS class to this as well. So we'll add those buttons in, and this is gonna allow us to go forward and back inside of our animation.
All right, so we'll go ahead and grab that and we'll add this to the model and we'll just tie that to play. So basically that'll play each step individually so that every time we tap it, um, that will go ahead and advance our animation. We'll also go ahead and add in a 3D gauge here and quickly show you what it looks like to connect some IoT data in this as well. So we'll go ahead and position this right here above the Bobcat and we have a lot of different out of the box <clears throat> uh, images here that we can use. So we'll go to our add external data and we'll add our temperature property here that's already running on our Bobcat. <clears throat> And then simply drag that and drop that onto the text. From here, we can add in a data filter as well. Um, so basically what this is will do, uh, we'll throw in some code <clears throat> to basically, you know, we can do a lot of different things here. This one here, we're gonna go ahead and just put it to Fahrenheit. Uh, but the idea here is that uh, we can, you know, truncate uh, things if they're too long. You know, if there's like a hundred decibel points after, after something, um, we can go ahead and truncate that down to a certain amount of data points. So we're just going to add add in adding in some 3D images here. And this is you know exactly what you saw earlier whenever I clicked on the pinger. It brings up these images to trigger different animations inside of the experience itself. Uh, so what we'll do here is We'll add a JavaScript function that we have predefined in the back end here uh, so that it will now link up to that. So now we can publish this from here. That'll publish out and that experience is now viewable on our mobile devices. So we'll go ahead and finish up here with a couple of slides. This is just basically talking about the value points here. So, um, you know, View 4 Studio is really going to unleash the power of AR with that fastest, most cost effective authoring and publishing tool available today. Uh, so, it has that drag and drop capability to allow you to rapidly create content in an intuitive visual authoring environment. And we can build these better AR experiences faster. So, we can efficiently leverage that three existing 3D CAD geometry to create immersive mixed reality experiences. And we can also seamlessly incorporate those step-by-step -step animations. And that'll also allow us to deliver AR experiences across the enterprise. So it's a single universal viewer app with native HoloLens support. There's also flexible cloud or on-premise deployment options. And of course, it also has the ability to seamlessly integrate real-time sensor and business system data to deliver meaningful, actionable information when and where it is needed. And that is, you know, in a nutshell, um, Vuforia Studio. So at this point, um, I think we can go ahead and open this up for questions and answers. Excellent, thank you, Ryan. I'll just hold one moment for some questions, but I do see one right now. Um, the question is basically, what do you get the same features or usability for Vuforia Studio and Creo 4? Um, or is there the same features in Creo 4 as you have in before your studio? Can you repeat that question? So I believe it's basically saying, do you get the same features in Creo 4 as you do in before your studio? Um, it could possibly be asking if this works with previous versions or is it only um, Creo 5? Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure what that question's asking, um, but what I can say is, you know, it's going to work with most CAD files. Um, so there's not really a version limitation. You know, if you're using Creo 4 or Creo 3, it's not really going to matter. Okay. Yeah, I believe that was probably uh, the question. If, like, what's the, if there's specific file types or something, but it looks like it'll work with basically any CAD file? Yes. Okay, so it looks like that may be all the questions. Um, so thank you again, Ryan. Uh, everyone will receive a recorded copy of this webinar uh, with further information on Vuforia Studio. Um, if you wanna learn more, you can always visit tristar.com, give us a call. Uh, we do have a lot of reps here that can kind of give you more information. 
Um, so thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks, everyone.